Good evening. Morning. Somebody's all mixed up here. Who is that? <laughs> We're glad you're here to share with us in worship this evening, and we are going to do prayer time here in just a little bit. But uh, as we get started this evening, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask his blessings upon us as we uh, seek his face in our prayer time this evening. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're thankful for the salvation he brought to us. We're thankful for the opportunity to share our salvation with others. And Father, we pray that as we do prayer time tonight, that in our prayer time we would realize how important it is to plead on behalf of our church for life and strength and power. Father, as we share together, open our hearts and lives and see into who we are and what we are. Father, through your spirit, draw us to you and to each other. Help these people to be instrumental in praying our church into new life and new health and new strength. Father, listen to us. Know our hurts and know our pains. Know our anticipation as we wait on you. And God, give the answers that only you can give this in Christ's name. Amen. You'll find one of those hymnals there in the pew and turn to 245. We're going to stand and sing the first and last stanza. And I told Gary that I was going to, and I'm going to still do it Sunday morning, but y'all have to sing loud. Because the last time I sung a hymn was this past Sunday morning. Me and 6,000 other ones. We made quite a worship service. Let's sing. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died. the cross 255 I'm going to do the first and last the 
cross, at the cross where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Here now. Here now. I guess I must have scared everybody off last week. Weston's graduating, so there's a couple of them, yeah, so anyway, question is, what did you pray for since last Wednesday night? Thank you. Huh? Okay. <laughs> okay, lost loved ones as well. Sick. Okay. What else? Okay. It's uh, and not just for him to bring youth into church, for the church to bring youth into the church. Exactly. If we get them here, he can minister to them. Uh, it's church's responsibility to get them here. His responsibility to minister when they get here. Uh, so, what else? Huh? Revival. Revival, okay. Uh, anything else? <laughs> this is a good time to be praying for our country and our country's leaders. Uh, our military, our relationship with Israel. Uh, this is a good time to be praying for those types of things. Uh, what else? Okay, you're probably right. Uh, while we're busy praying for everything else, uh, just a very simple prayer. Lord, let your will be done in spite of us. Opportunities to be used. All right, opportunities to be used. That's probably what I have prayed for more than anything else for you. Uh, God, use this church. Give them opportunities 
be a part of other people being a part of this church and new life for this church. Uh, those opportunities are absolutely important. What else? Okay. You remember last week we said that corporate prayer is the power of a healthy church. Realizing who God is as we pray. Do you remember in the book of Revelation uh, three or four, maybe five weeks ago, we read this verse. You are worthy. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and praise. For you created all things. You, by your will, everything in creation exists because of your will. Where does that put us in relationship to God? When we pray, do we try to bring that glory, honor, and praise to him as we pray? Do we give to him the recognition that he deserves? What do you think? Probably not enough. Could be. Needs versus praise report. How do you think it balances out? You mean the praise side outweighs the needs? <laughs> oh, it should, but it doesn't. You're right. Yeah. What is it? Uh, if we recognize him as creator, do we see ourselves as a vital part of his creation? Or are we just in that creation, unrecognized, unmotivated, just along for the ride? Or is it possible that we could be a vital part of that creation and see lives changed as a vital part of that creation. Well, 
if we don't have that armor on, Larry, we're not really prepared because he tells us we need that armor to withstand the wiles of Satan. Why is it so easy for Christians to be defeated? Lack of faith, but... Okay, lack of time in the word, lack of time in faith. But have we actually put on the armor of God through prayer, through the word? Have we actually put on the armor of God so that we can stand? Do we really believe what we're going to do? Exactly. Do we, do we actually believe, again, let's go back to that vital part of creation. Do we actually believe that I'm a vital part of creation such that God can use me? We just don't think he's going to do it. Right, right. 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 Uh, this thing of how does self weigh against the work of God, uh, you know, and too many times trusting self leaves us wanting. Uh, leaves us with more to be desired. Uh, you know, there has to be a set of circumstances that will allow us uh, to turn ourselves over to his will. Uh, where do we get that from? Uh, Exactly. What are y'all trying to do to me back there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we have a tendency to compartmentalize God uh, we we say we believe in the work of the Holy Spirit but do we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives or do we when we sense the Holy Spirit working do we become afraid of what the Holy Spirit may lead us into huh where it may take us. Uh, so, you know, we're about half of what we were last week. Uh, what can the prayers of a few people do? What did the prayers of a few people do Many, many years ago when the Holy Spirit was sent after Christ ascended into heaven, what did happen when those people were together praying? There was, yeah, there was revival. But when we talk about revival, we're talking about the Holy Spirit being rejuvenated in a place. Well, just remember that those early people, Larry, had not yet received the Holy Spirit. 
And when the Holy Spirit came upon them, what did they do as they were praying? You know, last week we said that scriptures tell them that where they were praying, the whole house where they were praying shook. Why? Because there was power there. Because God was working there. Because the Holy Spirit was real there. And I think we're living in a day and age when people just don't think that the Holy Spirit does anything today. Don't think we seek him like we should, okay? Do we come to praise God and seek his spirit and do what? Do we expect it? Right. Yeah. Okay. And you brought up a neat point right there. Uh, I have had people tell me more than one time down through the years, I'm just not being fed. And you know what that says to me? I need to get out my rocking chair and put them in my arm and get out a bottle and feed them. Because if you're not getting fed, it's your fault. But you're expecting, people expect you to bottle feed them. Paul said you needed to get beyond that milk stage into the meat of God's word. Whose responsibility is it at that point to be eating steak instead of milk? And every time I hear somebody, I, I just wish that I had a bottle in my pocket to give them because they're not putting forth any effort to know what God's word says for them personally. Well, they, they need a sippy cup, I guess. You know? If you seek me with your whole heart, you will find me. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. When we're when we're praying, let your will be done, and if it's necessary, use me to accomplish it. What part did we leave out? If it's necessary, use me. <laughs> yeah.
Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, God can use us both. I mean, obviously, both ways, but He is a good. I mean, for me, it's, it's what God can use me today versus what can I, how can I be used in the church in four days? You know, we all have a purpose. But I mean, if we want to write on you and for a coach and then get for us, yeah, I mean, no yeah. question. He can use it, He can still use us, but if. If we're open to what he's going to do through us, he can do uh, so so much more because we're willing and we're sensitive. And if we're just, well, God's not going to force himself on anything. Right. If we're that's what it comes down to is we have to be we have to be willing. He's not going to. I mean, he can use us. He can do anything he wants to do us at any time he wants to. But that's not how God looks at us. He sees us and wants us to be obedient. Right. I find myself, and I know this beyond a shadow of a doubt. Right. Yeah. But I can't, you know, I even catch myself sometimes. I don't know. Oh, yeah, there's a spirit out of this little edge right here for just a second. I, but I always just get back on the highway. Right. Because if I don't, I'm miserable. Right. I'm, I'm anxious. I'm nervous. I'm ill. I'm all these things. But when I'm following where I feel like God is leading me, then I'm going to catch that wind and I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it. And what's the one thing that tends to keep us on that road more than anything else? Prayer. Prayer. That one thing that keeps us on the road uh, to fellowship with God first and fellowship with each other second. Uh, the one thing that keeps us there, the best of all, is prayer. The second thing is knowing the word and how to apply the word. And, you know, when we spoke to graduates Sunday and we talked about their life story, a part of what we said was understand how this word can affect your life story, how prayer will affect your life story. And as we considered that, uh, you know, Knowing and understanding that prayer can change things uh, is one thing, but to give the power to God to actually do it is another thing. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of like people uh, want to be They want to be forced into something rather than walking into it willingly. Uh, they want to be shoved into it so they can blame somebody for what it is. I didn't want to do that. Right. You made me do it. You made me do it. I didn't really want to do that. I really didn't want to be a part of that. And, you know, there's, there's just a gang of people in church today that don't want the church to grow. There's just a gang of people in the church today who don't want to change anything to allow for church to grow. And when they get blocked into the traditionalism uh, of church, they're not happy with anything. I was reading the story of a guy today who, uh, who was telling his conversion experience. He lived in Kentucky. And uh, a person in church had been praying for him for a long time. And the person kept saying, I know he's going to be saved really soon. I just keep praying for him, and I know he's going to be saved any time. And so 
after several weeks of expecting this young man to come forward and uh, give his life to Christ, finally one day, uh, one Sunday, he stepped forward and took the preacher by the hand and he was just rejoicing in the fact that God had called him to be saved. And the church was excited about it. And so as the pastor invited the church to come around, the man said, I remember that about everybody in the church came and told me how excited they were about my salvation experience and uh, how God had been working in my life and, and they could see how God had been working and leading up to this day. And then he said, I remember the very last person that came by that day to speak to me. And the person that came by to speak to me, she said to me, you seem to be really excited about this. And he said, I am. God has brought so much joy to my life today. I can't praise him enough for it. And he said, I remember what she said to me. Young man, you'll get over that. I think too many people have gotten over that. You know, uh, he was so excited to praise God for what had happened in his life. And then for somebody to make that statement. Uh, there's a lot of people carrying ice water in buckets ready to toss it on you when God's working a mighty work. And it'll happen. And I'm telling you, when, when things really start to put life into the church, there'll be somebody with a nice bucket ready to throw it on you. When you're at your very best for the Lord, there'll be somebody with a nice bucket waiting to douse you, see if they can cool you off a little bit, put you back into reality. Uh, we have to to pray, believe in God's going to work. And in spite of those types of folks, we got to keep on. We got to strive to move ahead. Uh, corporate worship, the power of the church. You remember when the early church was coming into existence uh, the day of Pentecost hadn't been called church yet but believers were together what does it say about those believers they had all things in common they were together in a Honda Accord they were together in one accord. You know, 150 people, 120 people in one accord, they were packed. Uh, <laughs> but these people, they had all things in common. Their mind was focused on the things of God. God sent his spirit to that group to work. And what began as the greatest ingathering probably in all of history happened that day. You know, a little while after this took place, Peter stood to preach. Thousands of people came to know a Savior that had been crucified. Why? What had these people been doing before this happened? Praying. Praying. And their prayers included an expectation. Did they know where God was getting ready to take them? Had no idea. What were they doing? Just simply being obedient. What had they been told to do? Go back to that upper room and have a prayer meeting. 
Suppose God's people really got serious about having a prayer meeting. Where would it take us? Don't know until we try it. Going to have to try it real soon. Going to have to try it real soon. But this is what God can do if God's people believe him and trust him for it. Uh, you know, it's been a long time since I've seen real revival. A long time. What do I long for? Real revival. What do I think could change some things? Genuine revival. Not just, not just a Monday through or Sunday through Wednesday type of prayer meeting. But as long as it needs to keep going, let it go. Whether it goes a week, two weeks, or a month, or whatever, let it go. Let God keep working. Let God do what God can do. Now what would happen if we were to announce Sunday, we're, we're getting ready to have a two-week revival and when you're expected to be here every night for two weeks? What? <laughs> well, I probably would. Do, what you said was some people don't know what they're missing. Boy, I can walk out on a limb. I hear the chainsaw behind me. Do they really care what they're missing? Well, that's a good question, Brian. Are we showing them what they're missing? Are we, are we trying to get them into this? Uh, how many people did we invite to be in Bible study tonight or prayer meeting tonight? How many people since last week did we invite to prayer meeting tonight? That ain't a fair question, is it? <laughs> it probably is. Uh, what do we do? In the book of Acts, start to finish, when God did a mighty work, why did he do it? Because the people were praying. We might have mentioned that last week. But uh, when, we, when we go on uh, to what is actually taking place when God works, uh, you remember... The four and twenty elders and the worship in the book of Revelation in chapter 5. Who was the people who were crying out, worthy is the Lamb? Huh? The saints? Oh, uh, huh? No, it was the four and twenty angels and or elders and who finally ended up joining in the song of the elders. Who ended up joining in? The saints around the throne. And what was the message around the throne? Worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. 
he, not me, not you, he alone is worthy. So with that in mind, do we, do we end that recognition? Uh, on our part in this. You know, what I have a problem understanding is that when a kingdom is established on this earth, whenever that happens, that because I'm a believer, God's going to trust me to be a part of that. I don't fully understand that. But he tells us that we will reign with Jesus in this kingdom. We'll be a part of that. It's going to be real. It's going to happen. You know, we're going to be a part of that. Uh, why do we need to wait? I guess is the question. He rules today. Why don't we take our part with him today and bring more people with us for that kingdom? Wouldn't that make sense? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, what do we need to do moving down the road? What do we need to do? Huh? Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Uh, you know, I go back to what you said in the very beginning, Alan. Uh, I need to pray more for me. You know, when we begin to pray for me and get me in a place where I can be a usable instrument, then things will begin to change. So this week, as you pray for your church, I want you to pray for you. A usable instrument. Okay? Just a usable instrument. Uh, to reach lost people. to serve people, to minister to people, to listen to people, to encourage each other. You know, those are things we can pray for so that we can be used. So let's focus this week on ourselves collectively with the church, but specifically ourselves. And while we're praying for ourselves, let God know that you'd like to cross paths with one person. You know, not 10, not 20, not 50, but just one person who needs to hear about Christ. Just one. You might get 10, 25, or 50, but just one. That's all you need to ask for. You know, several months ago, we talked about who's your one. Let's be a little bolder this time and say, God, I'm not picking out one. You pick them out for me. And I'll be alert, and I'll be listening, and I'll do my part when they get here. Maybe that's what we should have done the first time. Yeah. Right. Right.
Right. I think there's a song in the hymn book. I believe the title of it is Open My Eyes. I think. Yeah, open my eyes that I may see. Glimpses of truth you have for me. And if you look at the words of that song, uh, that song in and of itself is a prayer. Uh, Sandy's getting ready to tell me what page it is. Yeah. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, spirit divine. Open my ears that I might hear. Voices of truth thou sendest clear. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. How does that happen? The word of God. Uh, and then silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my ears. Illumine me, spirit divine. And then the clincher. Open my mouth and let me bear gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare Love with thy children thus to share. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my heart. Illumine me, spirit divine. Huh? Absolutely. But I want you to see one thing. What happened in the third verse? The third verse said, Open my mouth and let me bear gladly the warm truth everywhere. But what is necessary? To open my heart so that I can do it. Open my heart so that I can be prepared. Exactly. Which is very true. It has to happen that way. And like Alan said with, with this song, this is a preparation for us to be what God wants us to be. Open my eyes that I may see. What is this? A personal prayer. What have I asked you to pray this week? Personal prayer. So we only have one thing to do. Go do it. And like Alan said, in Jesus' name, amen. So let it be. Thank y'all for being here tonight.